Hey, it's Seb. Um, so we are coming to the end of August, also known as Women in Translation Month, but I thought I'd do some recommendations anyways because it's always a good time to read Women in Translation. So here are five books translated from their original languages into English. Um, I thought I'd do them in the order that I first read them in, as far as I can remember, because some of them I read like quite a while ago. Starting with the first one, The Dangerous Age by Karen Michaelis. I couldn't find the translator straight away uh, when, I, when I looked for it online. But yeah, this is a book about a woman who reaches uh, middle age and she's unhappy with her marriage and so she decides to divorce and go to a little island. Um, she's quite well off, so she's been preparing for this sort of escape from society where she's going to live as basically like a hermit, but with, I think, like two servants, a man and a woman, to like cook for her and do the basic house maintenance things so she can just be like kind of a, lu a luxurious hermit, I guess, is the way to, to put it. It's probably my favorite epistolary novel ever, um, next to Dracula. Um, it's just, I don't know, I love the voice. The, the main character, Elsie Lintner, is just my hero. She's gold. She's like living the dream of just, you know, getting out of society and go do your own thing. Um, and then inevitably being incredibly disappointed and lonely and trying to sort of like justify her actions to herself and having decided to, you know, renounce partners and love and, and the whole world of, of society almost immediately starting to feel like she's falling in love with somebody. It's not a romance novel, it's more like just being by yourself on an island, writing letters to people, writing diary entries and just, I don't know, dealing with that. I think this book also caused controversy when it came out because it was like a big, it was early 1900s and it was like a big thing for to talk about middle-aged women like existing and having a voice and having like sexual desires and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, it's just, uh, I think, an important book as well as a brilliant one. Number two, The Diving Pool by uh, Yoko Ogawa, translated by Steven Snyder. This is a collection of three novellas originally published separately and I don't know, this was just like one of the most, I don't know, a book which inspired real visceral unease, like, I don't know how to say it, but like, I felt really uneasy reading it, but in the best possible way. Um, all the novellas were good, I especially liked this one called Pregnancy Diary, which uh, won the Aktagawa Award, which is an award for like up-and-coming writers here in Japan. It had some descriptions of like yogurt in it or something, which just made me feel uh, very uncomfortable. I think the three novellas here are put together because they've got like a shared sense of unease, or like this sort of atmospheric feeling that something is off um, with uh, with the voice with the protagonist like there's just something a bit strange about their their approach to life or their way of seeing the world i know yoko ogawa is kind of popular on booktube because of her memory police and her what was the other one the housekeeper and the something the professor's something housekeeper professor something something but yeah from what I've heard of those books, they sound totally different. I've read neither, but they sound like totally different in tone and content from The Diving Pool and the other stuff I've read by Yoko Ogawa. So maybe I wouldn't say, if you liked that, you'll love this or something like that. But yeah, just for the sense of feeling uneasy um, in, a, in a brilliant way. And the writing is just great. Next, we have a book I actually own, uh, The Word Book um, by Mieko Kanai, translated by... Paul McCarthy, um, who did an amazing job. This is one of my absolute favorite books of all time. I've talked about it before on this channel, and I will talk about it again on this channel. Um, it's a collection of short stories, and, or is it, actually? Because, like, you know, I think, I forget, at some point in it, I started thinking, wait a minute, is this a novel? Because the short stories have little repetitions of phrases and ideas and concepts that kind of just echo in, and, and they get repeated and, and, and change as, they, as it goes through and there's sort of a development of themes and um, it's writing about writing so there's sort of a general theme of, of writers and that's not something I'm normally drawn to um, they're all men well I think most of the main characters are men in this um, which is interesting as well but the way that the short stories are connected is very complicated and part of the fun of the of the book sometimes you read a story and you kind of feel this feels like it could have been written by the character of another story, if that makes sense. Although there's not like narrative clues for that, it's more just like um, like feelings, I guess. It's very abstract. It's not for everyone, I think, that's for sure. Um, like as it goes on as well, it becomes more and more abstract and more surreal. One of the, the most striking 
um, images from this book, I think, was of a, a guy who goes to get milk for his mom when he's a kid, and then he's on the train, and then he's not sure actually if he's an adult now, maybe, and his whole life has happened, and in which case, why is he going to get milk? Because his mom's been dead for a few years. And then, you know, he's getting the milk anyways and going back, and these kind of like, you know, things that don't really make any sense, and they, but they're nonsensical, but also like, profound but yeah this is um for people who like kind of abstract maybe a bit philosophical kind of fiction um a bit like borges in terms of some of the interesting routes that you go down it feels almost like a, a labyrinth kind of book um but also um it's very sensual there's so much done with like images and sounds and smells and like colors um just just a brilliant book Next, Celestial Bodies by uh, Joka al Harthi, translated by Marilyn Booth. This is a story about a family in Oman, so it's kind of like a family saga thing going through um, some ge different generations. It begins with uh, an arranged marriage and the young woman getting married, I forget her name, there's like loads of characters in this, um, but she is uh, really unhappy about the marriage and when she has a child, she names the child London as a sort of uh, kind of protest and uh, because it's a really strange like non-traditional name and it's even though she goes along like kind of submissively and like respectfully with the, the decision for her her future when it comes to the marriage the naming of the baby is kind of a way to you know like kind of fight back against tradition and this is only like the very first few pages of the book but it gives you a real sense of what the themes are it's about Oman and it's about kind of modernization like it's a rapid period of modernization i think it's like the 80s and 90s um and up to up to the 2000s or 2010s um but yeah you see the country and you get a sense of the country but you also get a sense of how much it's changed in just a very short space of time it's so cleverly written i think in the way that it can tie family to community to nation um and like you know go from the very intimate things to very kind of you know big society things, even global things as well, because obviously global travel becomes more normal um, as the country gets wealthier. And it does all that without like wasting a single word. Um, it's a book about connections rather than characters. So like the characters themselves aren't really memorable, but the sort of the, the little stories that happen to them are, if that makes sense. And I think it was just like a fascinating book showing how people and cultures and communities adapt during the transformation that takes place as a nation modernizes. And finally, the book I've just finished very recently, Comet in Moominland by Tova Janssen, translated by Elizabeth Porch. This is probably the best children's book I've ever read. Uh, it's it's also probably just one of the best books I've ever read. It's about Moomin Troll and his family and the friends that he makes and meets um, and uh, how they react to a big comet that appears in the sky and that seems to be heading towards the earth. I think the way that I would sell this is I would compare it to The Little Prince because everyone knows about The Little Prince and I think that everything that The Little Prince does that people like tend to like you know celebrate and, and laud is done better here. It's got the beautiful iconic illustrations, it's got the sense of like being really whimsical and sweet, it uses like really simple language that a child could understand to tackle very big themes about life and it's also kind of a satire of the adult world in a way that would make um, adults laugh and smile but I think this is actually more a children's novel than uh, The Little Prince. I think that The Little Prince is kind of nostalgic about childhood and that's something that obviously children won't connect to um, whereas this I think was really a great book for children as well as for adults like even though both will get different things out of it. It's got these strange wonderful characters but also like this real psychological like astuteness in like just like a turn of phrase or something like that makes you go oh I know someone who's just like that or oh that reminds me of me in the way that I did this sometimes or my friends who did you know it's just got little moments that really relate to real life and it's um I found it incredibly comforting you should read maybe the Moomins in the Great Flood first because this follows on directly from that and references a lot, like things that happened in that book although it's not necessary and this is um the better of the two uh but it's um I mean, it's just that that one's just a short little fairy tale. So honestly, you could read that quickly and then just move on to this one. 
everyone knows about the movements, but I feel like not many people have actually read the books. So I would really like encourage people to give it a try um, if you're interested. I found it not only incredibly comforting, um, but also like kind of epic in scale. Like it reminded me of like Lord of the Rings or fantasy in the way that the characters are on a journey and then they keep meeting new people and they end up with like kind of a, a band of, of travelers going through the world and having adventures. But also like with this, um, you know, sense of darkness and anxiety because there's this giant comet that's coming closer and closer every day. And that creates this tension, which I think is brilliant. And I think that different people will uh, respond to differently depending on their personality um with that i don't want to really go into it too much but anyway comment in moomin is a new favorite for sure and um i recommend it to anybody there we go that is my video those are five books by women translated into english that i think you should read please let me know in the comments if you've already read them or if you plan to uh, because yeah i want to talk to people about these books they're just they're just the best thanks for watching